precise is the art of holding since you've got they've got to make a decision on who's going to hold right uh, how precise is that I mean, you just got to hit the spot almost perfectly. Um, you know, if it's any, if it's towards you a little bit, you kind of hit a little high. If it's a little bit right, you kind of hit it toey. So you want to make sure it's right on where your mark is, so you can make the best contact possible. So. Who's leading the competition? Uh, they're both. It's head to head. They're both doing a great job. So they're both right here. Does that get in your head at all? With the, with, when you do, if something happens right. during a game and you change, and you have to yeah. change to the second. Um, uh, well, I know. Holder. I know sometimes that. Everything is not going to be perfect, so sometimes it's good to practice. If one's a little off, to uh, kind of adapt mid-kick. So it's good to always do that because you can't expect it to be perfect every time, especially uh, playing in Buffalo with the weather kind of crazy. So. Did you have any other hunter competitions while you were in college yeah. where you've been through this? Yeah, no, I, in college I had three different holders. I uh, had to work with each holder each summer, so um, I'm fairly accustomed to it. And uh, But these guys are pros. You know, They're here for a reason, so... They're pretty easy to get along with, and pretty easy gone. Is there anything you take from those days of like, um, oh, I remember the last time yeah. I went through this, I watched for this. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, you know, don't be, I mean, be critical on them, but just be aware that it's, it might not be perfect the first time, and you just have to be lenient with them, and then keep working and working. Eventually, it'll get to where you want to get, um, where you want it to be. Tyler, what do you remember about your situation a couple years ago? Because it is kind yeah. of similar to, you know, right. being drafted, coming in, going against the country, yeah. trying to make um, yeah, you just got to go in and uh, focus on what you have to do. You don't want to worry about what uh, the other guy's doing because at the end of the day, you can't control what he's doing. So just control what you can't control. And, um, you know, if you do that, then everything should work out. Uh, but it's a little different navigating it now to where um, it's the punters instead of the kickers. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to navigate. Uh, what's, uh, what's Reed Ferguson's batting average? Batting average? I don't know, probably like 200. No, it better not be 200. 250? <laughs> uh, no, nah, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say 690 for his number. Yeah. I mean, is it is it a matter, literally a matter of inches with him? Like he right. might be off a couple oh, inches, right? I, yeah, I think Reed's one of the best, um, and he doesn't miss very often for it. But if he does, um, the guys know where it is. It's a little inside, and they can easily adjust for it. But Reed's an excellent snapper. Does a great job of getting it where it needs to be. So he makes our job a lot easier. Either uh, you or Matt on kickoff. Who's got who's gonna hit it first? I mean I'm a little biased. I would I wanna say me. Uh so yeah, me. Is that competition gonna happen at some point? Uh I don't know, we'll see. It's up to that's up to Smiley and Coach McDermott. Tyler, you've had a couple successful seasons mm -hmm. um, in your first couple of years in the yeah. NFL. Um, what's your mindset this year? How do you continue to push yourself when you've had so much success yeah. already? Um yeah, so I mean, each year, obviously, I've learned. Uh, I've done good things and done some bad things. So I've learned, uh, and I've learned how to navigate the off season. So this off season, I started timing it up better. I feel like, uh, but honestly, those seasons, you just take what you did well and let that confidence carry over. Um, and I think the more experience, the better for me. But you know, last year, I can't. What I did the past two seasons doesn't matter anymore. So I can't get caught up on that and think I'm good when I know I have a lot more work to do. So I just take what I did well from that season and apply it to this season. Did you ever work with any current other NFL kickers yeah. uh, for parts of the offseason? Yeah, um, one of my best friends uh, kicked in college, Young Way Koo, the starting kicker for the Falcons. Um, we went and trained every year. We trained together, play golf together. Uh, and we like to talk about certain situations, uh, certain kicks, how he approaches it, how I approach it, just kind of bounce ideas off. And um, before every game, you know, Saturday night, me and him will FaceTime each other, just say, hey, how's your week been? You know, how you feeling? Just kind of give each other confidence going into the game. But I think that's super important. He's a dome kicker, obviously. He's a dome kicker, uh, yeah. Never, uh, uh, he got, sometimes... He yeah. say, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he knows. He knows what we go through, so he knows not to bring it up. What does training in the offseason look like for a kicker? I mean, it's a different yeah. position to train yeah. for. Um, you got to work out the same. Obviously, you got to really. I think in the off-season workouts, you're doing heavier weight because you don't have to kick on Saturdays or Sundays. So you just really push yourself to get as strong as you can be. Um, and then you don't want to kick too much. I would say kick twice a week, maybe three times a week. But um, yeah, just have get strong, kick to where you're not over kicking. To when you get to the season, you're not having to get strong. You're already strong, and you just kind of maintain that and kind of dial in your field goal kicking and kickoffs even more. Yeah. The older I get, the easier it is for me not to overkick. But the younger I was, I was just kicking a lot. And 
when you start kicking a lot, you start getting fatigued, and then you start creating bad habits. So you have to know the cutoff, and that just comes with experience.